the topic entitled The Resurrection Hope of Jesus Christ. All of us will agree that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is one of the most central element of the Christian faith. You know, we have a lot of things that we would like to, you know, prioritize as critical to the Christian faith. But the truth of the matter is that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the central element of the Christian faith. And this is one of the things that the Apostle Paul pointed out when he wrote to the church at Corinth, stating that without the resurrection, our faith becomes useless. That without the resurrection, whatever it is that we are even doing at the end of the day becomes useless. Without the resurrection, our gathering today, even in this kind of a fashion, virtually, is just a matter of a pointless exercise. He says to the church at Corinth, he says that, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching, our gathering together, our breaking of bread, our singing songs, and, and our, 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 our whatever fellowship and whatever things that we may be engaged in, is useless and he culminates it by saying that not only that too, but even our faith utterly useless and so the depth of Paul's statement is evidenced by the fact that the crucifixion loses its significance without the resurrection because Jesus is dead would have been just the death of a good man or possible the death of a fraud portraying himself as a messiah without the resurrection jesus's death can only be concluded as the death of a madman who thought he was god's son last night i said to my wife honey i'm going to call jesus a madman in my sermon and Nevin looked at me and she said be careful about the line the way I cross <laughs> be careful about that line you're trying to cross and I said to her but there's a context to it my dear and she said make sure there's a context to it because if you cross that line we start feel but the context of my staying there for then that Jesus is a madman is because without the resurrection, Jesus' death can only be concluded that he's a madman because he thought that he was God. But you and I know, as the song just rightly clear, that Jesus still reigns. And as such, therefore, then he is God incarnate indeed. So, however, with the resurrection being a reality, the significances of the significance of Jesus's life and death, therefore, then has significant meaning. Being the atoning death of Jesus's of God's Son for the redemption of humanity. In other words, then Jesus's death is not meaningless because of the resurrection, and because of the resurrection, it means therefore then that the death of God's Son Jesus Christ was for the redemption of humanity. And with this resurrection, we are now the recipient of hope. The resurrection of Jesus Christ brings us hope. And the Apostle Paul made this clear when he penned the following statement, when he says that, praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he says what? In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into what? A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The hope that the resurrection brings is different from the hope that the world talks about in that the hope Peter speaks of is not the wishful thinking usually associated with the word hope that we use today. We might say, I hope it doesn't rain or I hope I pass the test. But this is not the kind of hope that Peter has in mind. And such so, therefore, I would like to share three things about this resurrection hope of Jesus Christ 
provide, that, that it provides for you and I, as the Apostle Paul spoke about it in 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. And so what are these things that the resurrection hope provides for us that Paul, that Peter spoke of? Firstly, the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ provides us with, as is stated in the text, a living hope. Hope is a word we throw around very casually. I hope this works. I hope you feel better. I hope for that promotion. And the thing about this kind of hope is that it is just simply wishful thinking. Wishful thinking that is absolutely going nowhere. And as such, it is a dead hope. It is a dead hope. However, the hope that the Bible talks about that we receive from the resurrection in Jesus Christ is that of a living hope. And to be more precise in its language usage, it is a lively hope. Signaling, therefore, then it is totally different than the dead hope that the world promises and the hope that people make on an everyday general basis. The Apostle Peter wants us to know that the hope that we have in the resurrection is not just simply a living hope, but it is also a lively hope. He says, praise be to the God and the Father for our Lord Jesus Christ. In his grace and mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the, dead, from the dead. Unlike the empty promises or dead hope of this world, this lively hope or this living hope originates from a living resurrected Savior, which is Jesus Christ who is alive. And as such, therefore then, this living hope we have in Jesus Christ because of the resurrection is an energizing and an active hope, not a dead, empty hope or promise, but rather a living and a lively hope. And that's why sometimes I'm a little bit troubled when as Christians, we seem to act as if we have no hope. And we seem to profess that we have hope in Jesus Christ, but our hope in Jesus Christ seems dead. But know this very well, that our hope in Jesus Christ is alive. It is an active, energizing hope. It's not a dead hope that does nothing. Our hope in Jesus Christ is a lively hope. And when anything lively it's a flat about the place. It's a jump on about the place. Look at when you take a fish out of the water, you put him down on the dry land. Yes, he's, yes, he's, 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 he seems like he's suffocating and, and, and he's going to die, whatever it is. But the fluttering of the fish is an indication that that fish is a lively piece of fish. And it's a fight, carry on for life. It's in that same manner that I want us to understand that the hope that we have in Jesus Christ is a lively hope an energizing and active hope, not a dead hope, empty hope or empty promise, but rather a living, a living hope. And so therefore then, the living hope of Jesus Christ will be able to sustain us in the midst of great difficulties and challenges, no matter what those circumstances may look like or no matter how big those circumstances may seem. How is this hope able to do that? It is able to do that because it is born out of the full confidence, full belief, and full trust in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that is packed in that resurrection hope that now belongs to you and I as children of the Most High God. And so therefore then, when Jesus was resurrected, so too was our hope being resurrected. Therefore, because Jesus lives, the hope we have is real and it is certain. Because Jesus lives, the hope we have is active and energizing and certainly not dead. Because Jesus lives, we will always have hope for tomorrow. And as such, therefore then, my brothers and sisters, the songwriter is indeed correct. We can face tomorrow. Being confident that God will see us through. And this is the hope and promise that the Apostle Paul declared 
to the Christians at Philippi when he wrote to them and saying to them that being confident of this of this wanting that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Jesus Christ. That's a lively, energizing, active hope, living hope. Because God says that, that whatever it is that is happening around you, know this very well. Be confident of this one thing, that I who have begun this good work in you, my energizing, resurrecting, and lively hope that I have given unto you will carry you to the end. The living hope of Jesus Christ is active and its evidence is seen in the fact that the resurrection has initiated a mighty transformation in the lives of the disciples and should also be you and I. If you notice, I will use the word also should be you and I because a lot of us, we are saved and we receive the resurrection hope from Jesus Christ, but we play dead. As much as we have the energizing, lively, and active hope of Jesus Christ inside of us, we still play dead. And so therefore then, it was not Jesus' teaching, and it was not Jesus' miracles, and it was not Jesus' dying that accounted for the formation of the church. It was Jesus' resurrection. There would be no church had Jesus not risen from the dead. When Jesus died on the cross and was buried, his disciples were scattered. However, when Jesus' resurrection was known to the disciples, they regathered themselves. Today, you and I are gathered here today because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ was not resurrected, I can guarantee you that you and I would be somewhere else. Probably I'd be out playing some football on a Sunday morning, you know. And after I'm finished playing football, I'm gone fishing. And after I'm finished the fishing, but probably gone somewhere, gone and relax myself and eat food and enjoy myself and a plan which place my goal later at the night, as we used to say, go jollificate myself. But because of the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ, the lively, active, energizing hope of Jesus Christ, we are gathered today because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as such, the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ is active and lively, still gathering and still transforming lives. And that's why it is a living hope, not a dead hope. It is a living hope, it is a lively hope because even until today, it still continues to transform lives. Even until today, it still gathers people together to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we are not serving a dead God. We are serving a risen Savior who has given unto us the resurrection hope, a lively hope, energizing and active. And as such, we thank God for that. Second point is that the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ provides us with a lasting hope. Not only are we provided with a lively or living hope in Jesus Christ, but we're also provided with a lasting hope because of Jesus' resurrection. The lasting hope, the lasting nature of the hope we have is found in a statement the Apostle Paul uses in verse 4 of the text. In the inheritance we now have in our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says that, 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 that and he says, oh, and all of this resurrected hope is now into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. And this inheritance is kept for you in heaven. Hallelujah. To thine be the glory. Let me take a sip of water right here, sir. Praise God. My brothers and sisters, a whole lot of people fight for the dead left. A whole lot of people fight for family inheritance and family legacy. But may I say to you, my brothers and sisters, that our earthly inheritance eventually decays. Our earthly inheritance, sometimes when we get it, we spin it off and it done just like that. Plim, like a snap of finger. Everything in this life eventually dies or wears out 
or simply decays. We are surrounded by the beauty, we are surrounded by beauty that fades with age. Flowers that dies and possessions that rust or requires constant repairs or maintenance, but eventually it becomes useless. However, the inheritance of resurrection hope in Jesus Christ is not temporal and in need of maintenance for its usefulness. Not at all, my brothers and sisters. Why? Because the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ is unchanging. That's one of the things the Apostle Paul says about it. It's unchanging because it does not fade away. This means that, sorry, this means that, that there will be no diminishing of beauty in heaven. There will be no diminishing of the quality of the thing that God has in store for you as his resurrection or, or in the presence of Jesus Christ. It never lessens or it never declines. It never diminishes. It never reduces. We grow old and our positions in life deteriorate, but not so in the glory of God Almighty, the true Son, Jesus Christ, because of the resurrection hope that we have. The resurrection hope in Jesus Christ is uncontaminated. This means that it will not spoil and have to be thrown away or discarded because it is useless. The resurrection hope of Jesus Christ is unending. This means that there will be no end to its supply or no end to the ability of us to enjoy it. There will be no scarcity and no shortage of it. It is an unlimited supply that even when I enjoy it to the fullest and to the max and jump and dive in it and backstroke it, there's still an, 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 an eternal abundance of it for others to do the same and more with it. The resurrection of hope of Jesus Christ is unalterable, meaning that it is eternally secure for you and I, and that at no point in time there will be any alteration or any amendment to our inheritance of this resurrection hope. It is unalterable because it is reserved in heaven for you and I, where moth and rust cannot get it and cannot destroy it. This hope is unalterable, meaning therefore then it is fixed and irreversible once you receive it. This resurrection hope is a permanent promise for all of us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. And as such, therefore then, our persistent faith in Jesus Christ will reap for us not only a living hope or a lively hope, but also a lasting hope, a hope that will endure. Here the Apostle Paul and he writes to the church at Corinth and he says to them, therefore then, that three things will last forever. Anything else but all of these three things will last forever. He says to us, therefore, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. Yes, we always say to say that the greatest of this is love, which is true. But sometimes we keep to remember that it is your faith in Jesus Christ that will last forever and usher you into a, an eternity with him. And, and it is there that the unending love of God will surround us. Yes. Three things that will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And it's not blind hope or wishful hope we're talking. We are talking about the resurrected hope in Jesus Christ. Lastly, but by no means least, the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ provides us with also not only a living hope and a lasting hope, but it also provides us with a loving hope. Hallelujah. The loving nature of our hope in Jesus Christ is the fact that the Apostle, the Apostle Peter declares that it is being kept or guarded by the power of God, which is a demonstration of God's love towards us. He says now, who... Through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. My brothers and sisters, 
we are guaranteed protection in the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ from, 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 from some, some things. Mainly, we are guaranteed protection in the sense that we are kept. We are kept from the penalty of sin. Jesus Christ suffered on the cross what we deserve. And as such, therefore, our sins are imputed, are placed on him. Although most of the world rejects the sacrificial substitutionary atonement of Christ's death. Nevertheless, Jesus Christ died that whosoever may come to him will find salvation and the hope of eternal life. That's why, my brothers and sisters, the Bible declares that the love of God for humanity is declared as the hope of the eternal life by the Apostle John in John 3, verse 16. He says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that, my brother, is the loving nature of the hope that we have in Jesus, in the resurrected hope of Jesus Christ. We are kept from the penalty of sin. We do not face the consequences of our sinful action when all is going to be revealed. We are pardoned. We are forgiven. We are ushered into becoming daughters and sons of the Most High God. And for that, the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ gives us the pardon we need from all our sins. But not only are we kept from the penalty of sin, but we're also kept from the power of sin. Uh, this may seem to be a very troubling aspect for some of us as we talk about this part about we're kept from the power of sin because of resurrection. But understand what I'm saying. My brothers and sisters, when you receive the resurrected hope of Jesus Christ through faith in God's Son, Jesus Christ, Sin no longer holds us in bondage. We have been set free. And Jesus says that who the Son has set free is free indeed. And this means therefore that, that we are no longer under the dominion of sin, nor are we any longer slaves to sin. The resurrection hope of Jesus Christ has liberated us from the power of sin. Not that we will not sin. But that when we do sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who will plead our case. It's unfortunate that sometimes we believe that, you know, we have no hope and we have no power. And we have no potentiality to live lives that say that we are no longer bondage to sin. But here what Paul says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are no longer under law, but under the grace of the resurrected hope of Jesus Christ. The resurrected hope of Jesus Christ gives us the power, guards us from the penalty of sin, and it empowers us so that we can be free from the bondage of sin and live lives that are pleasing unto God. That's so why I say to you, my brothers and sisters, the resurrected hope is not dead hope, just a little hope for you to wait for and to receive in the future. It's not just future-oriented, but it is now oriented as well. It gives you the potentiality and it gives you the power and it gives you the capabilities to live lives that are pleasing now. You're not going to live lives in the future when you get raptured and gone to heaven. You can live lives that are pleasing now unto God. And you can do that by living life whereby you are no longer held bondage to sin because the resurrected hope of Jesus Christ liberates you. So therefore then being made free from the penalty of sin means that we are no longer at enmity with God. We are now sons and daughters to the resurrected hope of Jesus Christ. Being made free, we now have 
power to live as if we are no longer under the dominion of sin. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. And that's because we are now sons and daughters to the resurrected hope of Jesus Christ. All of this is a demonstration of God's love wrapped up in the resurrection hope we have in Jesus Christ. And as I was there for the, on this Easter Sunday morning, when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we also celebrate the magnificent, the lively, lasting, and loving resurrection hope that God has in store for us and God has bestowed upon us. Yes that God has in store for us because we don't know the full gamut of the resurrection hope that we have in Jesus Christ. We don't know what heaven looks like. We don't know what we're going to be transformed to look like and we don't know what we're going to see. But we also know that it is also bestowed upon us and that therefore that, that we can live even in the now to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Because the resurrection hope is not all tied up in the future. It is also in the now. My brothers and sisters, we have this resurrection hope in Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul reminds us and he says to us, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his word, great mercy has given us this resurrection hope in his great mercy if that's not love I don't know what else is do you have that resurrection hope of Jesus Christ in your life this morning because Easter Sunday is not about eating the sprat it's not about eating the fish and bread, whatever it is that we normally customary. It's not about just the abstaining from whatever it is and and and, and the fat and the forty day fasting. It's not also about you know just having a good bun and cheese Sunday evening or Sunday afternoon. This Easter Sunday is about the resurrection hope that God has for us willing to bestow on us because of his great mercy towards us. Are you living in that resurrection hope? Have you received that resurrection hope in the form of salvation as a start? This Easter, I encourage you to think about the resurrection hope of Jesus Christ if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior and begin to make it right with God.